All right, let's take a peek at the ready here of the 4.3. We're starting with finding the x-intercepts of the following quadratic. So remember that we have three methods for finding the intercepts. Let's go over our methods again real quick. Method number one, we always want to try factoring. Method number two, we want to try maybe complete the square. It doesn't have to be in this order. And method number three is the formula. Works every time. X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay, so from there, let's go take a peek at number one. Number one looks like maybe it's factorable. So setting it equal to zero so that I can try the method of factoring, I'm going to put the negative 10 in the top and the three in the bottom and think to myself what times what makes negative 10. You got it, five and two. Five minus two is three, so we're going to put the negative over here. So this factoring was able to work out as our method. So we get the, hang on, I'm going to move things around here. Okay, so the two factors we got are x plus 5 and x minus 2. And because we're going for x-intercepts, we want to continue this and solve the x plus 5 equals 0. So I'm going to get x equals negative 5. And then we're also going to solve the x minus 2 equals 0 and get 2. So I've got these two solutions to my quadratic, but they're asking us for the x-intercepts. So the final step I take is writing the negative 5, 0 and the 2, 0 as intercepts for number 1. Okay, how'd you do? Pause the video, try number 2, is it factorable? All right, let's see how you did. This time we're trying to get 7 that adds up to 8, you got it. There were two factors, 1 and 7. So 0 is equal to x plus 1 and x plus 7 factors. Solve each piece by the zero product property. We get negative 1 and negative 7. Now we did all that beautiful work. Let's go write the answer in intercept form. Negative 1, 0, negative 7, 0 are my factors. I'm sorry, are my intercepts. Okay, how'd you do? Now on this next one, it looks scary. Many people are probably gonna go to the formula because they didn't realize it was factorable. Please plug in and do the formula, get your ABC, but I'm gonna actually show you a way of doing this as factorable. So six times negative 20 makes negative 120, and there's a seven in the bottom. And did you know that 15 times eight makes 120? And then we're going to just put the negative there. So that's doing the x factoring. And then we also need a t because this has a coefficient greater than 1. Yeah, remember this from last semester? So 6x plus 15 can be reduced where we can divide both of these by 3. And that would give us 2x plus 5 as our first factor. And then 6x minus 8 can be reduced by 2. You got it. And that means that this is going to be 3x minus 4. So all this work so far was just to factor it. So we'd get 0 equals 2x plus 5 and 3x minus 4. Woo! Factorable. What would you think? Now we set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So we minus 5 and divide by 2. We're going to get our first solution of negative 5 halves. Next one we add 4, divide by 3, and we're going to get a solution of 4 thirds. Oh, I'm exhausted and I'm not even done. That's solution number 1, that's solution number 2, but they want x-intercepts. Okay, where am I going to squeeze this? Let's go put this up here where it says period and date. Uh, my first x-intercept 
is negative 5 halves comma 0. And my second x-intercept is 4 thirds comma 0. That means if I had a graph, I'd go back to negative 5 halves. Who even knows where that is on that graph, right? And I'd go over here to 4 thirds. And those are my two places where my parabola touches the x-axis. Yay, look at that, it's factorable. Now what if you did it with the formula? You should have gotten negative 5 halves and 4 thirds as well by doing A, B, C and plugging in. Alrighty then, let's go down to 4, 5, and 6. So 4, 5, and 6, once we set these equal to 0, what color should I use to make these stand out? Let's use yellow. When I set these equal to zero, it's kind of like they're already in vertex form. And so that we can actually just add the constant. So plus nine plus nine and then root both sides. So it's sort of like they're already started on complete the square. So now I'm able to root both sides and I'm going to get plus or minus three, right? Square to nine. It's plus or minus three is equal to x minus 2, add 2 to both sides, and I get 2 plus or minus 3. So 2 plus 3 is 5, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So all that work, and then go write that in intercept format of 5 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. So set it equal to zero and try the complete the square rooting way, right? It's kind of like already started for you. Pause the video and try number five. All right, let's see how you did. Okay, first we got a minus the nine, move that constant. And on this one, do you see the negative in front? There's one more step of dividing out that negative. So this is going to leave us 9 we're going to root both sides plus or minus 3 equals x plus 3 and we get negative 3 plus or minus 3 so negative 3 plus 3 would be 0 Negative 3 minus 3 would be negative 6. Those are my two solutions. Now we need to go write them in intercept form. So 0 comma 0 and negative 6 comma 0 are my two x intercepts. All right, pause the video, set this next one equal to 0 and try it. See how you did. Add the constant. Get rid of that one half by multiplying both sides by two. Root both sides. It's going to give you plus or minus two is equal to x minus one. So we get one plus or minus two. Well, one plus two is three. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Write those answers in intercept form. All that work that moved down there is all part of number 6 right up here. Just keep that in mind. Woo, look at that ready. How the heck did they expect us to squeeze all that work in there? I was barely able to do it. It's not pretty. Okay.